All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, it brings me great pleasure to to tell you that uh, big things are happening in campaign mania. That's right, folks. It's happening. It's big. It's news. It's out there. Motherfucking Chris Christie and Mike Pence have finally entered the GOP race for president. Something that we have long awaited for. I know a lot of you are Chris Christie heads out there. I myself am one. I'm a big Chris Christie guy. I do support big boys uh, and more big boy representation. Uh, Mike Pence, I support uh, gay representation on Pride Month, uh, nonetheless. So, you know, we got, we got the Silver Fox himself, okay? Right, right next to the big boy, big boy's neighborhood style, joining the fucking fold in the race, doing it, doing the damn thing. White House now. The battle for the Republican presidential nomination is heating up. Chris Christie launched his campaign last night. He's standing by live. Mike Pence just released his video announcement this morning. This morning, former Vice President Mike Pence launching his 2024 campaign, challenging his old boss, Donald Trump. It'd be easy to stay on the sidelines. That's not how I was raised. <laughs> Bought Pence has joined the game. Yeah. Mike Pence joining is like an NPC coming into the universe. You know what I mean? But I'm not even talking like a From Software NPC that like invades you. You know what I mean? I'm talking like straight up, like like a like an easy mode bot that you put in your MOBA game. Like he's got nothing going on, dude. Absolutely nothing. Raised. That's why today, before God and my family, I'm announcing I'm running for president of the United States. You got to ask, who is this for? You know what I mean? And I don't know. I, I really don't know if there's the Michael heads out there. But one candidate who is calling out Trump by name, Chris Christie. person I am talking about who is obsessed with the mirror and who always finds someone else and something else to blame for whatever goes wrong, but finds every reason to take... Look, look at how tubby he is. I love him, dude. It's hard. It's hard for me not to like him. He is such a rotund individual, dude. Oh, God, I love I love him, dude. He's got a special place in my heart. New Jersey, obviously, and also how rotund he is, obviously. It's huge. He is so bad and so stupid, and Trump absolutely fucking cooked him. He destroyed him. Uh, not only did he destroy him so thoroughly, which, by the way, remember, the state that he announced, New Hampshire, he got sixth place in, Okay. The one good thing Chris Christie ever did in his long fucking career was prosecute Jared Kushner's dad and throw him in jail, okay? And for that reason, Jared Kushner did everything in his power to kick Chris Christie out of the Trump transition team in the Trump White House. This guy was the first, like one of the first mainstream Republicans to endorse Donald Trump. One of the... First, mainstream Republicans to endorse Donald Trump at the time. Then Trump rewarded him by putting him on the transition team. And Jared Kushner was like, no, dad, you can't do that. Fuck this guy. I'm going to make it my life's mission to kick him out. So he got fucking cooked. He got absolutely destroyed by the biggest beta male on the planet, Jared motherfucking Kushner. Okay. The former New Jersey governor announcing his second bid for the White House with a blistering attack on Trump. The candidate... <laughs> Dude, the media is not even, like, holding back, too. They are just straight up. They're just straight up memeing on his ass, dude. Like, posting photos side by side with, like, Donald Trump. But the real way that he got cooked wasn't when Donald Trump took him off the White House uh, uh, roster, okay? That's not the worst way that Trump ended his life. This is the worst way that Trump ended Chris Christie's life. This is a real fucking tweet. Chris Christie at Roy Rogers at 11 p.m. in the evening trying to console himself. It's over. Once you get fucking ethered that hard, it's done, son. You can't fucking go. You can't come back from that. That is like, God, Trump is so funny. It's crazy. Oh, my God, he's got more. If you thought he was done, well, let me tell you, he's got more. And it was about our country and its future. And I wondered what our choice was going to be. Were we going to be small or were we going to be big? How many times did Chris Christie use the word small? Does he have a psychological problem with size? Actually, his speech was small and not very good. It rambled all over the place and nobody had a clue what he was talking about. Hard to watch, boring, 
But that's what you get from a failed governor, in parentheses, New Jersey, who left office with a 7% approval rating and then got and then they got run out of New Hampshire. This time, it won't be any different. He's back. He's so back. I secretly think that every single Republican that is in the in the primary race that's not Ron DeSantis, actually, fucking fuck, even, even Ron DeSantis, every single Republican that's currently running is running to, like, highlight Trump's greatest moments, okay? They're basically running like the Washington generals, okay? Trump is the Harlem Globetrotters of owns and burns and, and vitriol, okay? And every single Republican is basically running to, one, ensure that Ron DeSantis never fucking has a chance because every single person is not going after Trump's base, but instead Ron DeSantis is cut of the Republican primaries. But even including, Ron, like, everyone including Ron DeSantis himself is making him look so good. Like, it literally feels like they are doing this deliberately. Like, they, they have no shot. I don't know. I mean, we, know, we already know. Like, even Ted Cruz at least has the decency to not humiliate himself like he did when he basically fucking debased himself. He, he put himself down so aggressively that he actually had to do uh, phone calls and phone banking for a man who said his wife was ugly. And even that motherfucker is not currently going, yeah, I'm going to run against Trump. Think about that. You have literally worse optics than Ted motherfucking Cruz at this point when you do this. And yeah, he said, I'm the only candidate who could take on Donald Trump and tell the truth. Every other Republican thinks they can tiptoe around him. I don't tiptoe. Get me on that stage and get your popcorn ready. Does Christie have a better ass than Trump? Yes. And he has a better fupa than Trump too. But here, this was his, this was his greatest moment. Uh, this was Chris Christie's greatest moment. Uh, this is what uh, people say led to uh, Marco Rubio's demise. Marco Rubio actually came out with a tweet crying about this recently too. I think the experience is not just what you did, but how it worked out. Under Chris Christie's governorship of New Jersey, they've been downgraded nine times in their credit rating. This country already has a debt problem. We don't need to add to it by electing someone who has experience at running up and, and destroying the credit rating of his state. But I would add this. Let's dispel with this fiction that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing. He knows he exactly what he's exactly doing. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is trying to change this country. He wants America to become more like the rest of the world. We don't want to be like the rest of the world. We want to be the United States of America. And when I'm elected president, this will become once again the single greatest nation in the history of the world, not the disaster Barack Obama has imposed upon us. That's what Washington, D.C. does. The drive-by shot at the beginning with incorrect and incomplete information, and then the memorized 25-second speech that is exactly what his advisors gave him. See? Dude, he is so weak. What a weak man. By the way, Chris Christie fucking clapped on this, dude. Chris Christie basically vored Michael Rubio, uh, Michael, Marco Rubio here like it was a fucking Krispy Kreme donut, okay? See, Marco, Marco, the thing is this. When you're president of the United States, when you're governor of a state, the, the memorized 30-second speech where you talk about how great America is at the end of it doesn't solve one problem for one person. They expect you to plow the snow. They expect you to get the schools open. And when the worst natural disaster in your state's history hits you, they expect you to rebuild their state, which is what I've done. None of that stuff happens on the floor of the United States Senate. It's a fine job. I'm glad you ran for it. But it does not prepare you for president of the United States. Chris. Chris, your state got hit by a massive snowstorm two weeks ago. You didn't even want to go back. They had to shame you into going back. And then you stayed there for 36 hours, and then he left and came back to campaign. They're booing him. See, Those are the facts. Here's the bottom line. This notion that Barack Obama doesn't know what he's doing is just not there true. There it is. He knows exactly what he's doing. There it is. The memorized 25-second speech. Well, that's the, that's there the it reason is, everybody. why. Bro, dude, you can't come back from that. He literally said you have a scripted speech, and then you repeated it immediately. Is is so he is such a bot, dude. We have to understand what we're going through here. We are not facing a president that doesn't know what he's doing. He knows what he is doing. That's why he's done the things he's done. You know That's why we have a president that passed Obamacare and the stimulus. All this damage he's done to America is deliberate. This is a president that's trying to Dude. A president that passed Obamacare and the stimulus. Like he's doing the script again like a fucking NPC. But like, let's address 
the script in and of itself. Like my man is saying Obamacare is bad. I like just to just to help you understand like what where the Republicans were pre-Trump and where they are post-Trump. Okay? It's kind of funny like oh the stimulus is bad. It's like they're constantly are talking about like spending and how big spending is bad, how big spending is bad. Donald Trump also said, "Oh, I'm going to unwind every single thing that Obama had done, including Obamacare." Wasn't able to fucking do it. It was theatrics for the most part because they ultimately recognize, at least Trump ultimately recognizes, yeah, the Republicans kind of like spending. They do. They like Medicare. He's only there to attack Trump. Chris, no, Chris. they're all there to attack Trump. But let's take a look. My man, my man, my man. I'm fucking ready, dude. I'm so ready. God, he's he's lovable. He's lovable. Okay. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. But I, I, I love a big old rotund boy, you know? He's like standing in the fucking... He's standing in front of a, a, a you know, baseball field, right? And the first thing you're supposed to... The, the feelings that it's supposed to invoke is like Americana. I immediately think he's there to eat glizzies, okay? Like, I do not think that he's there to play baseball at all. I, I, I start thinking about the FUPA pick, but more importantly, I think he's there to eat glizzies, okay? Straight up. Oh, God. I love it. She him. does join us this morning, Chris. Thank you for joining us. George, look, uh, what we have seen over the last eight years, both from the Biden administration and from the Trump administration, um, is folks on the Trump side who put themselves before the American people. That's exactly what he's done each and every time when there's been a key decision to make. Um, and, and Joe Biden has shown he is simply not up for the job. I guess the big question is how are you going to get there? You're, you're pretty far behind in the polling, at least the initial oh. polling right now. It's very early. George is cooking his co-host, dude. George, That's fucked up, George. We've spent so much time together, man. George, I, I think there is only one lane um, to the Republican nomination for president, and Donald Trump's at the head of it, and you need to go right through him and make the case against him. Um, and that's what I intend to do while also making the case for leadership that doesn't turn its back on Ukraine, uh, for leadership that says, yes, we have to be fiscally responsible again, uh, for leadership that says we should have educational freedom, and that when you make promises as a presidential candidate, you should keep them. Donald Trump promised to replace and repeal Obamacare. He didn't do it. Donald Trump promised to build a wall. A I need polling on this, even though I probably wouldn't even trust polling on this. I need to see what like constituency in the Republican party is like, I'm scared of Donald Trump's statements on Ukraine. Like I need to know who you're running for other than the military industrial complex and like big donors from, you know, Raytheon and Northrop Grumman and the like, like, who are you saying that for? Across the border of Mexico and have Mexico pay for it. He didn't do it. He promised to balance the budget in four years. He left with the largest deficit of any president. That's crazy. That's crazy. Deficit hawking is only a tool that you wield to bully Democrats when they're in charge. No, no time, no time frame in the history of the United States of America, especially in contemporary American history, has a successful Republican president advocated and followed through on the deficit, on deficit hawking, on fixing the budget. That's never happened. The only time a president ha that has done that on the Republican side in contemporary history was a president that fucking failed after. President in history, and he promised to retire our national debt in eight years, and he added trillions to it. Um, those, that's... Yes, I'm talking about George H.W. Bush for the chatters. The, the only time in contemporary American history where a Republican president has ran on and even lied about, as a matter of fact, and got punished for deficit hawking when they were in power. Like, wasn't it read my lips, no new taxes? In, in, in like, recent American history, Republicans have consistently, especially since the Reagan era, with that exception, always just, like, fucking not giving a shit about the deficit unless Democrats are in charge. And the only reason why they care about the deficit is so they can bully the Democrats and just destroy their agenda, which is not even a real agenda to begin with, but, you know, it's just, a, it's just an effective cudgel, an effective weapon to wield, like a subscription at the top of the hour. A $5 a month subscription or a free one in the form of a Twitch Prime is the most effective way to stop seeing ads at the top of the fucking hour. 
If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe. You can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here is the three minute ad break now. God, I've been I've been serving him up today. In order to get into the Republican debates, you have to pledge to support the Republican nominee. But you've said you're never going to support Donald Trump, even if he gets the Republican nomination for president. So will you be on the debate stage? Can you support Donald Trump if indeed he is the Republican nominee? George, I'll be on the debate stage and I will take the pledge that the uh, RNC puts in front of me just as seriously as Donald Trump did eight years ago when he signed the pledge as Ryan's previous went up there and begged him to do it. And then on the first debate stage, he didn't raise his hand to say he would support the nominee. I will do whatever I have to do, George, to be on that stage and to be able to make the case to the American people um, that there is a need for new leadership. And I'll take the pledge. He said, I'll lie just like Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. So you're saying respect. you're going to take the pledge, but you don't really mean it? No, what I'm saying, George, is that I'm going to do exactly what the RNC has set us up to do. Um, not eight years ago, Donald Trump signed the pledge and then absolutely disregarded it in the first debate. And there was absolutely no penalty for that. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to save my party and save my country. We're going to get the 40,000 donors at least that you need to be on that stage, and we're going to make the case directly to the American people, George. But if Donald Trump gets the nomination for president, will you vote for him? George, he's not going to get the nomination for president because I am. That's so funny. I mean, so much copium. It would be pretty funny, though. Like, I think Chris Christie is objectively better than Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. I mean, he's still awful. Super fucking corrupt. Just a... Just a horrible monster in general, but I mean, he's never going to get it, but it would be better. Not that it fucking matters.